So, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to our seminar uh, that we're organizing today together with um, a crew on the digitization of the legal departments. I'm, uh, uh, my name is Eve Hemans. I'm a lawyer at Chevron and I'm also the country representative for the uh, Association of Corporate Councils, ACC, uh, in Belgium. So, for, for those of you who do not know ACC, uh, it's really the leading in-house council association. Uh, it has almost 5,000 members worldwide. Um, we are present uh, in almost every part of the world and even in Europe, we have 3,500 members. Uh, what we do is organizing uh, seminars on a regular basis, uh, like this one, for example, and also organize one annual meeting uh, in Europe where we try to gather most of our, of our members. Uh, maybe uh, if you can ju just show the, the slide maybe on the on the on the benefits for our members I think it's then I'll come back on that slide after that it's, I think it's one slide more so just quickly about the benefits of uh, joining ACC uh, so we have this uh, seminars we organized so permanent education we have practice networks where you, that you can join uh, in your area of interest there's an excellent database where you have lots of models that you can find back. And uh, most of all, it's really an opportunity for meeting other uh, in-house councils and to exchange experience among each other. And um, the ne next slide to show. So our annual meeting this year will be uh, in Madrid. Uh, it will be the 22nd and 24th of May. Uh, it's really, it's a great opportunity to meet lawyers from uh, other companies, exchange experience. Uh, it's going to be two days. Uh, in general, we have uh, 5, 500 to 600 members uh, which are participating. So it's really uh, a great opportunity and it's it's uh, fun to do. So some practical aspects. Uh, Eric, we don't have to, to just go back to the slide. Uh, practical aspects about today. Uh, and uh, first of all, if you cannot hear, there's a few tips. Uh, if you cannot hear, a few tips to uh, that you can maybe change. All the participants on mute. Uh, but you can put your questions in writing in the uh, chat, which is there on your right side. All the questions will be gathered, uh, so you won't see them, they're anonymous. Uh, and then we'll go over the questions at the end of the session. And now a quick introduction about the two speakers for today. Uh, first of all, I'm very happy that we have uh, an in-house council, which is, uh, is going to share his experience as well uh, of implementing the, uh, the tool from uh, from Cure, uh, it's David de Jonge. David de Jonge has been uh, has long experience uh, as a lawyer uh, working at international uh, law firms before switching uh, to the in-house function. He also has some international experience. He has spent uh, two years in uh, in Asia uh, before starting last year as uh, general counsel of uh, Van Genechte. And uh, he implemented the tool, so it's really is the good person to talk about what his experience is. And then uh, Eric Meert, uh, from, uh, uh, who's from the legal software department from uh, Bolters Kluwers, Belgium. Uh, they're building software for legal professionals, for lawyers, for in-house counsels, anybody uh, dealing with legal documents. And uh, for many years, Walter Kluwers has been guiding the uh, legal function on their way to digitization. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I think Eric is then well placed from his expertise uh, to give us some useful insights uh, today. I'll um, leave first the word uh, to uh, Stephen, I believe. All right, uh, good day to, to everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Eve, uh, for, uh, for this introduction. Um, Eric, if we can please move to the next slide. Thank you. So today, uh, it's, it's for me, uh, the opportunity to share with you uh, VGP's digital journey and, and a journey that's what it is exactly. Huh? I do not have uh, the feeling that we have reached uh, our destination yet. Um, it is uh, despite the fact that we have reached a number of, uh, of important milestones already uh, with uh, the Legisway tool and I'll come to that in a moment. Um, I'm still constantly exploring uh, other uh, opportunities uh, in the digital world um, and, and seeing which tools are available uh, to help me uh, in, uh, in, 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 in the legal profession. 
Um, so perhaps a small word, word first about uh, about VGP. So VGP, Van Genechte Packaging, is a uh, privately held uh, company. Uh, we go way back. Uh, the company has been incorporated in 1834, and it's now the sixth uh, generation, uh, which uh, still serves as as reference uh, share uh, holder. The core business of the company is to provide uh, packaging solutions. And all our packaging solutions are so-called fiber-based, meaning they are made from paper and board. And so what we have seen um, uh, over the past years is a very big demand for paper and board-based packaging solutions. Huh? Uh, coming from, amongst other things, uh, the Green Deal uh, coming from the EU, uh, promoting a more circular economy, uh, looking overall at SDGs. Um, sustainability is a very important factor for many brand owners. And so that's where uh, VGP uh, finds itself well-placed uh, to provide innovative uh, solutions to our customers, looking at uh, replacing plastic, uh, reducing uh, the need to, to use um, um, high uh, CO2 emissions uh, when it comes to, to, to packaging uh, end products. So innovation is for us very important, despite the fact that we have a long-standing tradition, uh, we're not conservative and we want to think, uh, putting our customers at the center, how innovative packaging solutions can really make uh, brands stand out. And so VGP has operations in Belgium, France, um, uh, Germany, Poland, Hungary, Latvia, and, and Russia. So we have a very nice uh, European footprint with quite a number of uh, legal entities uh, making, forming uh, the VGP group. And that's going to be relevant from a corporate housekeeping uh, perspective uh, in a moment. So moving on, uh, Eric. Um, the world of the future is, is now. Huh? When we um, uh, act and, 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 and work as legal professionals, I've always found it, it's very important to keep an eye on the world, huh? to keep an eye on what is happening uh, around us. And we clearly see that the world is changing. Um, as you may have noticed, huh, a couple of months ago, uh, Facebook changed uh, its name into uh, meta and so the metaverse is a concept that we are confronted with uh, things are happening in the virtual world um, you now already see that you have brand owners who are uh, buying virtual land plots in the shopping streets of the future in the virtual world so it's a uh, very uh, crazy uh, development uh, what you see and then on the slide is one of these others, other, 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 other developments in the digital world. A couple of months ago, Sotheby's uh, at an auction sold a unique non-fungible token, a so-called so NFT. I had never heard about it before, um, uh, of this monkey. So it's basically kind of a painting, but a painting that only exists in the virtual world. It was sold for more than one million uh, dollars. So. You can ask yourself then, okay, how does this interact with the legal uh, profession? And then, Eric, moving on, um, that's exactly what I was or what I have been uh, reflecting on over the past years, huh? trying to keep an eye on what's happening uh, in in the world. I've been thinking about the fact that, okay, we as legal uh, professionals often have the tendency to be risk averse, which is a positive element, but also to be at times quite uh, conservative and not really open to look at uh, opportunities or tools that are available for us. And so I started thinking about how I was running my profession and I came to the conclusion that with self-reflection, I was often quite reactive. I was running behind the development of the business. To give a concrete example, when uh, there were uh, compliance-related questions uh, from banks, I had difficulties finding very basic corporate information. I had to check within the organization where, for example, um, the latest uh, composition of the board of directors of a certain legal entity uh, had to be found. I had to check it. I didn't have it readily available in, in my hands doesn't really come across as being very professional or well-organized huh? when, when you're not able to do that. 
um, when you are in a contractual negotiation, for example, and you choose a certain legal entity that you want to add as a party to the contract, but you not, you're not sure about where the registered office is located. If you're dealing with a business uh, that's active in multiple countries uh, with a lot of legal entities, uh, you often don't know that um, um, just, just by heart, and you need to have tools uh, that allow you to quickly retrieve this, this, basic, uh, this basic data. So from that, let's say, more reactive mindset, I started to reflect how can I be, how can the legal function in general be organized in a more uh, proactive way? And so I tried to, to tie the dots. Eh? The world uh, outside the legal profession is becoming more digital. What could uh, I do eh, to use some of these tools, digital tools that are available for the legal profession and apply it in my in my day to day? And And there, I think another important element is, okay, when doing that, I don't want to lose my own job huh? because we are quite conservative and we, we don't want to have digital tools replace us. And so the mindset was more, okay, if there is recurring work always coming back, which is very basic, um, it would help me tremendously to have that done by a tool or to have support from a digital tool. Because if I have that, then I'm freeing up time to work more on, let's say, the higher end intellectual work that a machine uh, or a computer will never, never be able to do. So I really see it the challenge or the risk that you would uh, not uh, be, 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 be in a uh, function anymore, which, which would have a certain reason, um, is replaced by the fact that you are effectively freeing up time to create more value add for the business and to be more preactive, to be on the forefront of where the business is, is happening. And so um, if we go to the next slide, uh, Eric, thank you. Um, how do you come with this idea huh, to go digital? I think it's it's very important to align um, what you want to achieve uh, from a legal perspective with your organization. So it's important to to focus and to if you look at at, at an elephant, to chunk the elephant in pieces and to set clear step by step uh, objectives. Uh, to discuss that with the top management and to explain what you want to do, why you want to do it, and how you're going to uh, achieve it. Um, here at VGP, when I arrived, the CEO has a very simple uh, view on, on, on how we want to be successful. And so we want to achieve uh, sustainable profits and we want to do that from an organizational perspective by keeping things simple, standardized and, and harmonized. And so when I started to launch the idea of, okay, could digital tools be a value add for us to achieve that uh, goal, um, he was very open to the idea. And so then we really started to define more precisely the scope. And as I already referred to previously, for us, the scope started with our corporate housekeeping. Wouldn't it be nice that we can have uh, in one digital location our corporate DNA, our basic corporate data of all our legal entities? It would be great if we would have that stored in one digital location, easily accessible for a number of well-defined group people and accessible for those people at the level of the legal entities that need to have uh, access to the information. So the idea was let us look at the market to see what is available in terms of tools that allows us to have this, let's say, corporate housekeeping uh, tool. Um, on top of that, it would be great, and this is something that top management, in my experience, often likes. Eh? They want to have things in order. Eh? When they talk uh, with, with, with legal officers, uh, they're interested clearly in the business, but at the same time, they want to have it covered off and the business covered off well, properly managed in good documents, well organized, etc. It has to be in order. Okay, so if it has to be in order, then the question is, how do you organize that, that when you have a signed agreement and there is a question about the interpretation of the agreement, how can we retrieve that agreement, that contract, in a very easy and accessible uh, way? And so, starting from the corporate housekeeping, the idea was to link to the legal entities those elements of key contracts that we also wanted to have easily accessible for um, a specific audience of people. For example, group contracts, contracts with a group-wide impact, they should be accessible for our executive uh, committee. Um, if we have an important sales contract uh, above a certain value, 
our chief commercial officer should be able to retrieve that contract within a number of clicks on the screen um, as opposed to being reactive asking the legal officer where is the contract and then losing perhaps one or two days in the internal organization to find uh, an important uh, contract so we've defined the scope we've defined certain kpis eh? where do we want to be and then we started working on the project and eh? we had to think about okay with the budget that we have um, with the resources that we have how do we are how do we reach our our targets how do we reach our desired outcome um, we put a timeline to it and we also identified a number of, of milestones so here for me an important takeaway uh, of, of our exercise has been you cannot do this alone it depends of course how big your legal uh, function or your legal organization is but often we see that 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 we uh, in legal departments are not um, staffed let's say by 20 or 30 people um, so we have to be organized in a mean and a lean way and you need to call on um, additional support of, of resources and so in my previous company and also here at VGP, this has been a joint cooperation between legal and finance. And the reason for that was quite simple. Um, when we came to the desired outcome, we saw that quite a lot of documents uh, being linked to the corporate uh, DNA of our legal entities are also financial documents. Eh? For example, annual accounts. Uh, for example, um, the meetings. Uh, the, the, sorry, the, the the meeting minutes of the general shareholder meeting uh, approving the annual accounts. So a lot of this, in a mean and lean organization, is is organized or supported not only by legal but also uh, by or in close cooperation with finance colleagues. And so we had a team, uh, a mixed uh, team of uh, legal and, and finance people uh, to, to work on, on the project of implementing uh, Legisway, uh, to which I will come in, in a moment. So in summary, the step-to-step -step journey or step-by-step -step journey for us has been to really identify what do we want to achieve with the tools that are available in the markets, not just start with a project uh, just like that, but really to have a very good reflection on how our desired outcome could be reached in the most cost efficient way, what we had to do to get there. And then if we move on, um, Eric, to, to, to the next slide, please. Here, I just give you a, a flavor of how uh, our Legisway tool looks like, but, but I kept it a bit anonymous so you do not see all of our legal entities uh, below uh, the, the, the screenshots. But in essence, uh, what we have today is um, a tool, and I, came, I, I discussed it already now a couple of times, a tool in which we have all our corporate basic and key documents stored per legal entity. So what I can see is I see all of the legal entities of the group. If I click on the relevant legal entity name, I get a snapshot of the legal entity um, where I see what is the registered seat of the legal entity, uh, what's the VAT number, uh, where is uh, the uh, company uh, incorporated, uh, etc. So in a snapshot, you see uh, the, the, the basic corporate data. Huh? If you're confronted with uh, where is the registered address, where are the key contact details of a relevant legal entity. I don't have to uh, start to, to make a number of phone calls in the organization to find out. In one snapshot, I can see it. And then behind the snapshot, you have a number of, uh, let's say, subfolders in which documents can be stored. And so these documents are minutes of shareholder meetings, minutes of board meetings, um, specific powers of attorney, uh, which may be in place. Uh, so you can easily see who is authorized to represent the legal entity. And this is quite important. Um, besides specific powers of attorneys, composition of the board of directors, uh, there it's relevant to note that Legisway uh, for us uh, allows us to trigger automatic notifications. So, for example, if we have a board mandate which is going to expire somewhere in March of this year, what we can build into the system is that I and the relevant board member or whomever you select gets a notification well up front. Uh, alerting to say, ah, hold on, the board mandate of this person is going to expire in a couple of weeks' time. And so you get um, real support, let's say, from the digital tool uh, to flag out that a board mandate is going to um, expire. 
there are when it comes to board mandates or uh, proxies eh, people holding a power of attorney there's also a, a very easy search tool if i for example want to know okay which board mandates does stephen de jonge uh, uh, keep um, i can just select uh, the name stephen de jonge and then you can see uh, what are the official mandates or powers uh, that the relevant person has um, in which legal entity uh, with which term uh, etc so it really helps a lot uh, from a corporate housekeeping perspective to keep track of the mandates and the external representation and Again, every company is different, but my experience with, with CEOs is they like to have these type of things in order. And coming back to, to our vision and to make sustainable profits and to do it in an organization which is uh, or has simplified processes, standardized processes, harmonized processes, it is really very easy to immediately see and have your exco be able to see what are the mandates of the various legal entities uh, that, that, that we have, when do certain mandates expire, uh, et cetera. So besides that, uh, per legal entity, we can also see uh, the shareholding structure. So that's also very easy. Um, often eh, when you guys get confronted with KYC questions, questions about ultimate beneficial ownership, uh, that is also something that we store in um, uh, Legisway. Uh, so if there is, for example, a question in Poland on um, um, the, the UBO, we can pull out of the system Legisway, a very easy uh, corporate uh, organization sheet, uh, and it goes all the way up to then the uh, ultimate parent company of, um, of the group. Um, it indicates clearly what shareholding percentages are in place, etc. So uh, it's very easy and yeah, it's, 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 um, it's very easily accessible. Wow. Um, that is in a nutshell, the core of how we use Legisway uh, from, a, from, a, from, from a corporate housekeeping perspective. So it's an easy tool. You can choose um, who has access. Uh, as I said earlier, a restricted group of people at group level have access to all of the data of all of the legal entities. Uh, at local level, we have decided to only give access to, for example, the country manager or the site manager uh, and the site controller and one or two people he or she would nominate. Uh, give them access to the information of the legal entity for which they are uh, are responsible and that works pretty well um, from a resources perspective in order to upload this data because someone has to do it and that's potentially a question you may have and as I said earlier we have done it in a, a collaborative way between legal and and finance we do not have legal officers uh, at every site in every location of the group so that means that we often work with a senior controller or a senior member of staff in the finance team um, who will have access to for example yeah the annual accounts um, the meetings of boards uh, the, the minutes minutes of meetings of the boards uh, minutes of meetings of uh, of shareholder meetings etc also has a view on on poas and other type of relevant corporate data so we've mandated that person to upload uh, the documents uh, into the system so it's a cascading down of responsibility uh, i myself as general counsel have a general overview and i act as the general coordinator i regularly have check-ins with the local teams to make sure that there are no local developments that we may have missed and which create certain documents which have to go into the system. Um, and so that's basically the, the, the check and the balance that we do uh, have, have, have virtual calls at the moment. Uh, physical meetings are not really uh, due to COVID have not been possible over the past months, but have regular check-ins with the people to make sure that uh, the, the Legisway tool stays up to date uh, because it's only worth something. The value of it is that it is kept up to date. Uh, and so that is important. And you do need to, to have clear allocation of responsibility and of tasks to ensure that the, the, the platform remains um, up to date. And so that's for the corporate housekeeping part. Um, as you can see from the screenshot, we all also use it for, for contracts. Um, so it's a similar approach as for the, the corporate uh, legal entity data. For contracts, uh, we have decided that um, contracts which are subject to mandatory legal review uh, 
So that's something we have defined in our delegation of authority policy. Um, these type of contracts which trigger a certain liability, uh, which are for a longer term, um, which uh, have a, a certain value. These type of contracts cannot be signed under our delegation of authority policy if they have not received a green light from legal. And so these contracts we have identified as being important. And so these contracts we want also to have stored in, uh, in Legisway. Um, and, and so that happens on a per legal entity uh, basis. It is with a drag and drop uh, function. So it's pretty easy when I get a signed contract um, uh, that I've reviewed, I will simply drag and drop it into the system and it gets stored and linked to the relevant legal entity of the group that has entered into that uh, contract. Similar as with the board mandates, um, we have the tool to indicate what the expiry date of a contract is. So, for example, um, if we have an important uh, sales agreement generating a big revenue, which is going to expire, let's say now end of the month, end of February, um, I, I can put in there all as well an alert, uh, an alert towards, for example, the chief commercial officer or to myself to say, hey, uh, reminder, this contract is going to expire. If an action is required eh, to, for example, renegotiate pricing and then to prolong the agreement uh, and besides pricing, keep the same contractual terms. If that's a condition, uh, Legisway system will allow you to, to, to build in that, that alerts. And so again, it helps you to be more proactive eh, because rather than commercial people coming to you and saying oh my god we forgot but this contract has expired what do we have to do reactive solution we can now proactively go to the business and say look this contract is going to expire what do we need to do are we going to prolong it or um, uh, do we need to find another solution so i think that is the 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 the, the, the key for me having a tool which is a one-stop shop for storing uh, in an electronic way documents making them easy accessible for both local teams as well as group teams at the one hand and at the same time also having a system which allows you to create automatic uh, alerts and um and and not not being being required let's say to follow up on every single contract or every single board mandate that you have around because that's just not feasible to do with legal teams which are quite uh, or often uh, organized in a quite mean and lean way um, two things which you also still see on, on the screenshot is compliance and signature requests. And then I'm coming back to the beginning of, 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 of my presentation. So for us, it's a journey and we're not done yet. So we are using very actively the corporate folder and the contract folder of Legisway with the automatic uh, trigger events, as I explained. We are not yet using uh, to the full extent uh, uh, possible the compliance and signature request uh, tools. And so that's for me uh, in the next phase, what we want to work on. Compliance, what would this mean for us? It would mean that we have uh, the relevant group policies and procedures uh, that are relevant across the group, that we have them accessible in Legisway as well and made available again to the audience that we define. On top of that, per legal entity, our idea will be to have the policies that are legal entity specific or site specific. For example, if you have specific health and safety rules for a site, that we uh, include them also in Legisway and make sure that the people at the site level who need to know about these rules are also made aware of them and have access uh, to the platform via Legisway. So that's something that we have to develop. But coming back to I, what I said earlier, we have chunked, let's say, the elephant in a number of pieces. We looked at a number of milestones, a number of desired outcomes that we wanted to achieve within a certain timing. We delivered that, and now we can go further and um, and, and 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 move to a next phase. Signature requests, um, also something which we have to perfect. Um, we have uh, the, the DocuSign tool, which allows us to digitally sign uh, documents, digitally sign uh, not only contracts, but also we're using it for, for powers of attorney and other data, uh, uh, corporate data. Um, our idea would be to have the uh, integration, uh, which is possible, and, and Eric, it's maybe too detailed, but, but um, the, it is possible to have the integration between DocuSign and Legisway, allowing that signed documents from uh, DocuSign automatically get into your uh, Legisway system. And that is also something that we want to look at um, to, to, to create better automatization uh, in, in that area. And, and so that's in a nutshell uh, how our journey has been. Um, 
in summary, for us, it started with me basically coming to a company uh, last year, uh, seeing what's going around outside of the legal world, huh? referring to the, the non-fungible token, referring to the meta world, which is all being created uh, outside of the legal world, thinking about that, thinking, okay, how could digital tools help me in my day-to-day -day profession, finding a CEO who has um, um, ears for this, eh, who really also wants to have more efficiency in the organization. That's how we found a match. We sat together, we defined a team, we defined a number of desired outcomes, and the result is that we now have a tool which is working uh, pretty well, and uh, that makes my life uh, uh, a bit easier and, and more pragmatic and allows me to focus on the things that, let's say, really count. Huh? Um, so that's in a nutshell, I think, Eric, uh, my uh, testimonial, if I may call it like that. Uh, and, 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 and yeah, happy to listen now to you to the more technical aspects of, uh, of Legacy Way. Yes, thanks, uh, thanks, Steven. Uh, what a journey, indeed. You, you are on. Uh, happy, of course, to uh, to stay uh, as a partner on your journey because, indeed, there is a lot happening in the in the legal digitization uh, world. But also happy to hear that uh, Legisway indeed uh, makes your life uh, easier. That's uh, that's a nice uh, mission statement, uh, of course, uh, that we have. Uh, but I. Uh, uh, I particularly like your uh, approach, indeed, of, of chunking it into, I would say, uh, feasible uh, feasible steps. Uh, but you have a very uh, thoughtful uh, process in, in mind that you're following strictly um, to bring in more uh, innovation in, in the company. So, um, um, so thanks for uh, for sharing these uh, real life uh, experiences uh, with us. Uh, indeed, as um, Steven mentioned, there is of course a lot of uh, a lot of changes going on in in the world, putting I would say the legal function, uh, um, if I may say, uh, under pressure, both internal uh, and and external changes, of course, um, uh, that are that are happening. Um, what we uh, what we see, uh, we have of course here a very broad uh, audience in different countries. Um, I will dig into three uh, main pillars uh, of which we see uh, also based on studies, but also in the many conversations I have with, with uh, companies um, that, that they are really uh, top of the agenda. But of course, you are better positioned to, to see where you're already, I would say, um, uh, where your needs are already um, covered by maybe solutions that, that you have in place. Um, but try to just translate this in, into your uh, into your reality. What we see is if uh, if you work on these three pillars, um, it's it's really already a good step forward to becoming, I would say, a center of excellence uh, in the in the legal profession, uh, and helping, of course, uh, grow the the reliability of of the business as a whole. So the three, uh, I realize that I'm, uh, I would say I'm a little bit in between uh, my presentation now and your lunch show. What is on, on today's menu for the remaining, uh, um, I would say, 25 minutes, and of course there is a room for uh, for questions, is indeed we will talk about collaboration. Um, uh, Stephen already mentioned it, of course, that's also collaboration internally, but I, I will also uh, tackle the, the point of collaborating, I would say, in a broader sense, uh, be it indeed between the legal, uh, the, within the legal department, but also uh, with, uh, with external parties. Um, then we will focus on uh, contract uh, on contract management. Uh, that's a module um, that I hear, uh, I would say, in, in all conversations I'm having with, uh, with companies. Contract management is always, uh, I would say, on the table of, of a legal department, uh, regardless of the maturity uh, level of the company with regards to digital uh, tools. Contract management is always uh, is always on the table, so that's, I would say, a quick win to uh, to improve. And then, of course, as uh, Steven indeed mentioned, so the future is, is happening now. Uh, artificial intelligence, that's not really a theoretical idea, I'd say it's really happening now, it's, it's available in the tool, and I will uh, uh, talk about uh, concrete use cases, how uh, AI uh, can speed up some certain elements and indeed uh, make uh, life of, uh, of legal counsels easier by uh, reducing uh, certain, certain repetitive, uh, repetitive tasks. So maybe just starting with collaboration. A uh, first example uh, that you see here is uh, the dialogue box. Uh, it's in fact you, you could um, you could see it. Um, legal, of course, does not work on an island. Uh, what is the idea here? Uh, you see, uh, it's this is about streamlining requests that come from the business to the legal department. 
we see here uh, the, the the view in fact of the of the business requester um, uh, sending requests to the to the legal team. Uh, the idea is indeed that you can streamline a bit the variety of, of requests that are uh, addressed to the legal department, be it indeed uh, contract requests, be it uh, maybe just requests for advice or maybe even uh, self-service contracts. So um, just to streamline this and to really have a good view um, both for the uh, for the the person that uh, um, initiated the request, okay, is my request being taken into account, uh, for example, um, and, and streamline this, and what is the status? Uh, when can I expect a return from the legal department instead of, okay, I handed it over to the legal department and now I'm a, a bit, it's, it's a bit of black, a black box, I would say, I don't know when exactly uh, my, uh, my question will be uh, taken into account. Um, if we look at the view of the of the legal person uh, themselves, what is the there? I'd say the the main uh, value add is, of course, you can really have a good view on what is in progress, uh, what is the workload that's going uh, up to the uh, to the legal team, uh, and it also um, allows you, in fact, indeed, to to better schedule maybe uh, your work and group it um, group it uh, depending on the complexity of the work and make sure that it's allocated to the right uh, team member, uh, depending on, on complexity, uh, specialization, uh, and so on. So you, you could really see this as a kind of, of legal portal to streamline, I'd say, requests between uh, the business um, and the legal department. Uh, the idea is, uh, of course, to reducing the lead time between the request and, and uh, when, it's, uh, when it's handled. So that's one uh, one example indeed um, of um, I would say collaboration that we really see. Uh, there is of course pressure on the legal department, and uh, legal departments need to do I would say more work, more complex work, uh, with still of course limited teams, or and that there is there is limited uh, FTEs uh, available. So, uh, but this this type of of um, portal makes it easier to 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 really handle the the requests. Uh, another example of um, um, of collaboration is indeed even a step further, and that is by uh, what we call legal smart documents. The idea here is to um, that legal puts at disposal, in, in fact, uh, uh, templates where the business can then um, in, complete. Uh, and guided by a number of questions, complete in fact the the fields that have to uh, to be populated in in the in, in the document itself. So here, as legal, of course, you are still in control because you you created the template and you can um, I would say list the the questions that have to be filled in. But the advantage is, of course, that uh, even non-legal people. Um, can populate these, these the guided fields uh, and the document will be created as as such. So this is also reducing, of course, time uh, and spreading, I'd say, the the work between the, the business and and legal department. And then one step further, uh, you see. So the, the questions, of course, um, are then populated in in the document. One step, uh, one other example of collaboration uh, is, of course. Um, legal workflows. Um, legal workflows put you in a position, of course, that you as a legal uh, department or legal counsel, you're always in control. You know, uh, you want to know where you are in a legal for, uh, workflow with regards to contract drafting, with regards to maybe negotiation, uh, who is involved uh, in, for example, negotiating the terms with the counterparties and so on. But what is also very uh, interesting is that you can also uh, define, for example, your own triggers uh, in workflows. Meaning, as, as a concrete example, for example, you, you say that uh, contracts up to a contract value of 1 million uh, euro can be signed by person X. Uh, once it's above that, uh, in fact, you can have a automatic workflow triggered uh, by a condition that is that is completed to guide, in fact, the workflow to, to another person that has to sign because the contract value uh, is above a, a certain threshold. Um, so combining, in fact, uh, both uh, the workflow 
um, there is flexibility, of course. You can, you can. That's sometimes the question that I get is, um, okay, we can push workflows with the advantages that I'm sure that there is no, I would say, no way of escaping the the workflow. On the other hand, there is still some flexibility because based on rights and roles, you can still, of course, give flexibility and say, okay, if this person uh, with this role, uh, for example, can still delegate, uh, for example, the the approval uh, rights to 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 a a specific person uh, if needed so that you're not stuck uh, in the workflow in case person uh, is, is, is not available or not capable at that moment to for example to approve something uh, so there is it's a, it's a good combination of of the uh, the trust that you know that you have really workflows in in place and that you uh, are uh, sure, in fact, that people cannot sign uh, specific things that, that uh, of course, put uh, the company at uh, at risk. Um, but on the other hand, there is flexibility. Um, the good thing is that you can you are always um, informed. You can define yourself indeed who needs to uh, to receive, for for example, emails or notifications when there is uh, a change in the, in the workflow, for example. Um, and this is, of course, you 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 entirely can can uh, well can create this workflow uh, on yourself, uh, uh, and it's possible, of course, to to define workflows in the beginning of an implementation. But also, of course, uh, on the fly, there is still a possibility just to configure your own workflow. This uh, only takes a, a couple of minutes to uh, to to create the, the workflow in the in the system. Then maybe moving um, the next topic uh, that we see uh, that is really on, um, an, an important one in starting a digitization or indeed moving a step further uh, in your digital uh, uh, project is indeed contract management. And you would, you could say that um, maybe some people think, okay, contract management. This is the basis. This normally uh, should be covered. What we see in in a lot of in in studies that we that we've run recently is in fact that only 16% of legal departments say in fact that they have complete visibility on over all their legal uh, commitments. So in fact, that's uh, that's one. Uh, that's only one uh, in six. I let it up to you, of course, to define whether you're in the category of the five and six or or the one in six. Um, uh, no need to to go there. Um, but it's it just gives an ID. And what um, what we think uh, that are two concrete uh, ways, indeed, of uh, I would say enhancing this this visibility is indeed, and Stephen already mentioned it uh, uh, shortly, is the alerting function, so the notifications uh, and and the reporting. I will start with the uh, the alerting uh, functionality uh, immediately. But what you see here, and that's very important, um, it is of course um, this is a dedicated legal solution. It's uh, it's a uh, complete other story than starting indeed to uh, to maybe categorize your your contracts and so on in in file structures on a shared drive this is really you see here what is important uh, to start uh, alerting and reporting is of course that you have a, a clearly structured um, uh, system uh, or view in indeed in place that is really linked to the to the day-to-day -day nature of the of the legal department where you can easily follow up where you can really have a very good view on all the tasks and, and approvals uh, that that need to happen so a structured view that that is really the basis and then indeed you can um, start uh, with the notifications and and alerting uh, functions um, here is uh, an example, um, but of course you can uh, create your own notifications and alerts. What is important um, to know is that you can, or you can just subscribe to a list, I'd say, of, of alerts that is already uh, natively um, available in the system, um, and and then. Uh, yeah, just subscribe it and, and ask for yourself, okay, for example, I would like to, or this person uh, would uh, would need to receive a specific email if this uh, triggering condition happens. For example, um, and this depends, of course, on your own uh, reality, uh, but for example, uh, uh, two months before uh, the, the, the end date of contract, I would like to, to, to receive, for example, a reminder or, or an, a notification. 
but also more concretely, um, for example, what are my actions? For example, 15 days before uh, a deadline, I want to be reminded. So it's a way of, of having the help of the system, not having to put all this uh, in your own uh, tasks. I would say the system there starts to work for you and makes uh, your uh, your life uh, easier, of course. Uh, so, but this is really, you define the alerts that, that you think are relevant to you to stay on top and in control of, of your own uh, legal uh, legal duties. Then moving um, next to the alerts, of course, when I talk about uh, enhancing visibility of your contractual uh, obligations, um, what is of course uh, very clear is of course the, the reporting functionality. There are many uh, ways where how reports uh, can can give you this, this visibility uh, uh, to stay in control. Uh, but of course you can do it from, from uh, I would say normal tables, pie charts, bar charts, and so on. So there are uh, multiple possibilities. Um, uh, what is important is you can you can define these reports yourself uh, so you can really configure them based on the criteria that are important for you to have I would say insightful uh, reports uh, you can of course uh, export them to Excel you can uh, select whether you want uh, only these uh, these uh, uh, reports available in visual representation and so on so there are multiple possibilities here what is important is that you are you you have this uh, really at your own hand so you define the criteria uh, on which the reports are uh, are created um, and then of course they are, they uh, will contain the, the the real um the real life data i would say the the real time data uh, when once you run the report you can even go a step further and you can um, have scheduled reports so you can uh, for example and this gives also um I would say ease of mind, a bit peace of mind uh, that you know that, for example, if you're enjoying uh, an Eastern break, uh, a week of, uh, of a week of holidays, that you know, for example, that the report is automatically sent by the system with the data, with the correct data in it, uh, to a, uh, to a person or a team that uh, that you want this uh, uh, report to be sent to. This was a part about, uh, we, so we, we tackled a bit uh, collaboration, then we moved into indeed contract management with the alerting functionality uh, and uh, and the reporting functionality. Uh, just looking at one step further, that is the, indeed, as I mentioned, the help of, uh, of AI. What we see as typical use cases of, of AI, and I will uh, briefly show this to you, uh, AI is mainly re indeed to speed up contract analysis. So the system will automatically uh, scan, I would say, the essential elements in contracts. We all know the reality um, that or you are faced with very complex uh, contracts um, or indeed uh, that the, not, not maybe all Con complex contracts, but also high number of contracts or contracts that have a number of a uh, high number of pages. Um, it, it's no surprise. I hear it often, indeed, that you have uh, contracts of 50, 60, uh, even up to more uh, pages. And there, uh, AI, of course, uh, can uh, help uh, because the system will not get uh, tired. We are all humans, and AI can uh, can there help to make sure, indeed, as Stephen mentioned, that you can focus as a legal counsel only on those things that are really um, that are really very uh, uh, complex for example so how uh, what is the uh, the id is really you just uh, put your your document in the system so whether it's a word document uh, a pdf this can be done in in different languages and then the ext extraction of the of of the system will uh, will start uh, and you define your own uh, i would say fields um, or you can if, if you are in a very specific industry you can even define your own um, your own uh, special words to 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 look uh, for what you see uh, here left in the screen is indeed of course starting with uh, basic information that is automatically retrieved by the ai from your contract that you've uploaded or that you re indeed received uh, from from uh, from an external party uh, and then the, the system what is the id is indeed this uh, uh the system looks for this information in the document and then indicates whether it found this information and the degree of certainty so uh, you still have of course if it's marked in green the system is really sure about the answer it found in the document if it's for example 
example, marked in orange, uh, there is still a possibility to, uh, to validate this as a legal counsel, but the system will suggest you some possible answers that you can then validate. Uh, and of course, it's a, it's a self-learning process. Uh, but that is, of course, for the, for the I would say, the, the basic information, no need there to spend time. The advantage is that the, that the metadata around the contract are already completed by the system itself. So no need to, to, uh, to do their uh, manual work uh, with the chance that there are um, errors in it. But what is very important is also that you can, for example, uh, indicate, um, okay, do we speak in this? Do we find anything about certain clauses in this uh, in this contract? For example, do we talk about? Do we find anything about force majeure? Is there is there any uh, clause that is mentioning something about uh, termination possibilities and so on? So that is really um, that is really I would say uh, one step further, of course, than than only completing the the, the basic information. So this is um, this. This is uh, this is happening now. It's it's really available now in in in, in the tool, and this is a typical uh, use case. Another use case for AI, what we see is if you have a large amount of, of historical contracts, uh, we even, uh, um, with the help of AI, can indeed do this mass upload. Um, if you have thousands of contracts. Um, yeah, indeed, to, to be put in the system without having to retype all this information and, and the, the meta fields in the system, uh, AI can, uh, can there's, uh, also really certainly, certainly help. So um, maybe just some uh, final thoughts and then moving to, to the questions. We, we briefly uh, touched upon three topics. Uh, of course, I'm available uh, to dig uh, into deeper discussions with, with those um, that are interested uh, in it. But so the main pillars we touched upon are collaboration, contact management, um, and AI, because we see that those three are really concrete, um, concrete ways of, of announcing um, and stepping, making real concrete steps in your digital uh, process. What we also heard from uh, in the in the in the case uh, in the testimonial from from Steven and uh, I've put it in a, a little bit other words, but it's really indeed starting with a vision. So thinking big, that's that starts with a vision. But my advice is really, if you really want uh, to 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 get the pro the, the project running and and really uh, have clear added value um, without having to wait for it very long, uh, it's really thinking big. But in the meantime, also starting small and chunking it, I'd say chunking indeed the elephant uh, and get back to the business with visible impact. And then of course, it will be easier uh, eventually to, to maybe free up uh, um, uh, other budget or, or other things uh, indeed to, to further go into your uh, legal uh, digital journey. The good thing I think is, um, you, you, you are not alone. So um, uh, we are, of course, uh, here. We, the consultants uh, are, of course, here uh, to, 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 well, to, to consult. And, and uh, so don't, uh, you should not be, uh, I would say, afraid to, to ask for help. Uh, and we are happy to, um, yeah, to, to see uh, in your actual case, indeed, um, what could be the best uh, way of, uh, of, of making some steps in the, in the digital, um, digital process. Uh, we are uh, up to. Um, we can now uh, foresee just some uh, some time of uh, of questions. Yes. A very good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon, uh, Steve, Eric, and Eve. Thank you very much for your presentations. They were very interesting indeed. Um, I'm Ine van den Krasse. I am a marketeer at the Department Legal Software of Walter Scriber Belgium. And I indeed had the pleasure to receive some of your questions. Um, but if you have any other questions in the meantime, then you can still pose them, of course. Um, let me just repeat how you can do that. You have the panel, the control panel on the right hand side of your screen. If you click uh, questions or the interrogation mark, you are able to write your questions there and we will receive them. But let's start with the questions we already have. So. The first one, um, I believe, is one for Eric. Um, what are the most common quick wins that legal departments choose to start their digitalization process? Okay, thanks, uh, Ina. Um, yeah, that's a good question. What, um, um, what, what, what I often see, I, I briefly mentioned this already, is um, what I often see is um, contract management as a starting point. 
uh, contact management uh, is often at the table uh, and this is really um, I would say uh, a domain in which you can easily show the added value uh, of enhancing the the speed indeed with which you uh, handle the contract uh, life cycle be for, from A to Z. Uh, so that that's really uh, one that I that I often see as as a quick win and to show uh, to show real uh, results to, to to the company and, and to the stakeholders. Um, uh, just thinking indeed of, of, of the journey also of, uh, of Van Genecht uh, packaging uh, is indeed then it's quite logical once you are uh, once you have a uh, more uh, I'd say uh, compli complex uh, company structure with a lot of entities in, in multiple countries and so on then indeed it becomes uh, it, it, often the, the second the second one in scope um, is, is corporate housekeeping. Uh, just there, indeed, uh, having all these entities right in place, being able to to uh, to quickly and easily have your uh, updated org chart in place, and indeed being able to to link contracts to the right entities uh, and their defined rights and roles. Uh, that, that's that's uh, that's uh, an interesting one, and maybe. Um, one that I often also see, of course, but it, it depends on the nature of the business, is uh, is litigation, of course. Uh, they're having all information of, of litigation uh, in place and being able to easily link it uh, with the contracts and, and reusing the data that you have in the system. Uh, that's um, but that's of course uh, that's sometimes in the in the second phase I would say. Now there there are multiple. Well, in, indeed, we we uh, legislate covers I would say between ten and twelve um, modules in total, depending on on the version uh, we have. So we we just look at. Uh, I always look with the client okay what is your problem child what what do you want to solve where is the uh where is the easiest in fact to 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 demonstrate to the business added value and then start with there of course having this vision uh in mind but going there step for step i always say big birds don't fly start just with uh with the small things uh of course with the vision in mind but go there on your own uh, uh and and chunking it uh in 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 feasible steps uh that are digestible i'd say for uh, for the company thank you very much eric many interesting questions from our participants um there's more coming in um a participant is asking the next question um he or she says, well, this tool actually looks more like a tool for the internal legal or financial department of a company. Um, and the participant says, we are lawyers and uh, we are currently using DLEX from Walters Kluwer. So I wonder what the added value of um, the tool is for us as uh, a law firm. Okay, that's yeah. That's that's maybe a question. Uh, the person who asked this question could, could maybe indeed also reach out uh, to me directly um, uh, by by the email that you see on the on the screen now. So happy to uh, to, to check this um, because I would like to have more information on what exactly uh, is already covered in their existing system, uh, where there are maybe uh, some uh, some elements that are missing, and then indeed seeing how uh, the solutions could could. Uh, could work uh, well. I would say next to uh, next to each other. Um, why I why I mentioned this is of course that legislate is is not at all a. I would say uh, it can of course work uh, in a standalone version, but we also have many contacts indeed where information uh, is exchanged between legislate and, and other tools, be it indeed other um, uh, yeah other legal solutions. But of course it can also be uh, be linked with uh, ERPs, uh, financial systems systems and so on. So happy to, uh, for this person to uh, to to dig into that deeper and understanding their real uh, their real context that's a good idea okay the next question um this tool as explained for a corporate legal department would also be valid and feasible for an hr department in emea headquarters like contract templates legal workflows contract managements 
Yes, indeed. Uh, HR uh, HR contracts are one uh, type of family of contracts. Uh, you can uh, the this, uh, the tool uh, caters for different um, families of contracts or indeed types of contracts. Um, so yeah, that's perfectly uh, that's that's perfectly a use case uh, that that can be uh, that that can be covered uh, just as a type or family of of contracts in the system. Um, yes. Okay, great. Uh, a last question we received. Um, how do you convince your management of the added value of technology? Because the participant says that it is not very easy to come up with uh, hard arguments uh, for this. Okay. That's that's what I often see is indeed that uh, legal departments or, or legal councils uh, in general, I'd say like like the tool and see the added value. Uh, wh what I what I really believe is in fact that the technology or the tool itself will um, will be an enabler for uh, legal departments to to indeed show their uh, added value to to the company. Um, and of course, there are some metrics and, and KPIs that we can uh, that we can uh, define. We have we have. Uh, uh, material uh, that, that we can share with uh, clients to make up this indeed this this business case or this uh, return on investment uh, analysis uh, but what you really see uh, and then um, just indeed looking at what what is the value of of uh, having indeed or speeding up for example the contract uh, the contract management life cycle so it's really we have some some metrics of course that that come into play there um what what you really see is uh, of course you um by having all information in one system, uh, you will have uh, you will have a very uh, uh, powerful reporting uh, possibility. Just and being being on top, I would say, of all KPIs, and this will really put, I would say, the legal department more as as a business partner, uh, as a as a business partner towards towards business, because you have really a good very a very good view on on all the KPIs, and you can also uh, yeah report report back in fact to the business what what is the amount of, of work that's that's on the plate how it's uh, dealt with uh, what is the average processing time and so on so uh, that's one thing i think but, but also having it all uh, in one system and having being in control also gives um uh, yeah peace of peace of mind um that's of course uh, not maybe uh, uh, from a business point of view but you you the main uh, duty, I'd say, of, of or the main reason why why legal departments, uh, of course, exist is finding the right balance, indeed, between um, um, thinking with the business uh, and and helping them to grow uh, to grow the business uh, and so on by 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 all these uh, legal obligations. But in the meantime, also uh, staying on on top and I would say safeguarding the the company uh, for uh, for uh, for risks so um, you, you really have a very good view on uh, this risk aspect of, of the business and you can divide um, yet all the risks that are uh, linked to, to to legal obligations uh, in the system and having a, a real uh, a real uh, good uh, good sense um, sense there okay thank you eric uh, steven i saw you were nodding when i asked the question um do you have anything to add or how did you yeah, experience I think, I think, yeah it's a very good question indeed because ultimately when i refer to our ceo or top management in general i mean they they, they it needs to have a value add i mean uh, you need to be able to quantify it uh, and and uh, how we have done it is basically first of all keep in mind that um the immediate value component is in risk mitigation, um, uh, making it very concrete. Uh, we live in, in very crazy times in the supply chain. If you want to understand what your uh, possibility is to increase prices uh, on, on customers uh, or vice versa on, on the procurement side, understand if certain price increases can be uh, effectively implemented by a supplier. Um, you want to know what your contractual position is and you want to know it fast. So that's just one very specific, very tangible example where you can measure, okay, what's the value of what you're buying? Eh? What's the value of your procurement uh, based on different categories? Where are your contractual commitments? And um, uh, that you can demonstrate towards your management that having this tool will enable you to come to a very quick 
uh, legal response uh, if there are questions. Another thing is, um, again, from the risk mitigation perspective, if you get a claim um, and you need to understand how the contractual relationship with the counterparty is governed, um, it can be very important to come up with a fast internal position to then together with top management determine the strategy you want to take. And if, if you don't really know what your contractual commitments are, well, then you get lost. And, and I think the number that Eric referred to in the presentation of if asking legal departments, do you know what type of contractual commitments are out there? If the number was 16% eh, of them confirmed that they're in control of it, it's, it's for me um, a, a scaring number. And I think that's a number you can also use in the argumentation eh, because when top management wants everything to be in order, I think that number is a striking number just to pick to say, look, we don't know what's out there. And it's not because we don't know what we're doing. It's because we don't have the organization or the tools to help us. Eh? So that are for me important elements. And then last but not least, Ineke, I think it is also very important to keep track of what you're doing. And then you can have a bit of a debate, and that's a different topic on whether or not internal legal functions must, must, must keep uh, timesheets, eh, as external lawyers often still do. Um, what I have developed is, is really to keep track of the topics that I'm working on um, and, and just to have basically from a quantitative, quantitative perspective an overview of, look, since the beginning of the year, I've been treating 200 different files. If we look from a quality perspective, these are the files with, with a high value. Um, and, and, and so there are various ways in, in determining or keeping track of, of what you're doing. But it just demonstrates that, okay, there is a lot of work being done by legal uh, professionals. And if you can take out of that amount of work that you're doing what is qualitatively with a low value, then you can say, look, by replacing this via tool, I will have much more time to focus on uh, the, the, the high quality work. So I see it in summary and in short, two things. The first perspective is the risk mitigation perspective. Know what's out there. Be able to react fast when uh, you get confronted with issues. And the other one is purely a value component. Measure the time. Uh, that you're allocating to stuff which can be done by digital tools and, and, and demonstrate that if that type of work is done by digital tools, you're creating um, senior legal management time uh, on, on, on uh, or the, the ability to, to, to focus on other type of, 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 of topics for senior management or senior legal management. All right, thank you so much for sharing this, Stephen. Um, this was our last question. Um, so I believe we're a bit past um, time. It's, it's 12.35 right now. So I believe that we can close the session here. So thank you everyone for staying with us and, until now. Um, and we all wish you a very great rest of your day and see you in the next webinar. Goodbye. Bye-bye, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.